Hi guys, today's video is going to be on deloading, how and when we do it. Now a deload is a way of managing and reducing fatigue. And there's two ways you can go about it. And the first one is lowering volume. So I'll go over this one first and then go on to the second. So you're approaching a deload and the idea is you're giving your body a chance to rest and recover. Now we can go into the gym and progress for months on end, but there's going to be a point where that progression stops and you need to be able to notice this and think, right, I need some rest, I need to go into a deload. So what you do in a deload is drop volume. Now I'll give you an example. Say you're going into tra train legs and you had five sets for quads. I'd go about this by dropping the volume on the most taxing most taxing exercise for that muscle. So say you had five sets on quads, you had two on a hack squat, you had one on a leg extension, and then you had another two on a leg press. For me personally, I find the leg extension to be the most the most taxing uh, exercise for the quad. So I'd drop that leg extension. So that will give me then a little more, a little more space to recover from that session. Now you'd, you'd use this approach in all of your training for that deload week but you want to make sure you're not dropping intensity so the intensity stays there the volume just drops off so only the amount you're doing drops off now this can differ from individual to individual obviously based on recovery and obviously if you're in a surplus or deficit now you want to make sure you're training to failure all the time even in a deload just just to reduce will completely stop any chance of moving backwards now, if you're in a deload whilst you're in a deficit, so if you're in a diet phase, there will be a change to energy balance through that deload. Obviously, you've dropped the volume, so you're not going to be expending as much energy. So you either have to accept the fact there may not be a weight change during the deload week, or you could potentially up your step count to make up for the energy that you would have expended if you weren't deloading. Now, you could up your step count, but that could also increase fatigue. And the idea is we're trying to drop off fatigue as much as possible. So personally, I just accept that there might not be a large scale change or any scale change during that week, because the main goal is to get back into a position where we can keep progressing and keep feeling good in the gym. Now, if you're in a surplus, this is a much better position or easier to go through if you're deloading. So your food will stay the same uh, and obviously you'd yet again drop volume but because your food stayed the same mm -hmm. your energy output's a little lower mm -hmm. so that just leaves more space to recover. So you're going to be going in a surplus you're going to go back into the gym feeling better than ever and your lifts will be flying. You should be in a perfect position to keep going. Now uh, beginners when deloading. If you're new to training completely, say you, you've, you're lucky and you've got good form in the gym, and it's not, it's not a lot of the time a beginner will, but say you're a beginner, you've been training for a few months and your form's relatively on, you know how to push yourself to failure and really use the muscles you are trying to use. I would aim for a deload anywhere between six to 12 weeks for a beginner, so the beginner with good form and actually knows how to train progressively and has the ability to push their body to that limit, I would give a six week gap between deloads purely because you're not going to be used to that stimulus and you are going to fatigue a lot faster. Where on the other hand, if you have a beginner that maybe is still learning, form isn't 